Salute to Knicks Nation, CP the Franchise here. You know, a lot of you guys DM me and, and let me know how much Knicks Fan TV means to you, how much it's gotten you through a tough time, especially during the pandemic. Some of you even DM me and said that you, you were depressed, you were going through a lot of anxiety, and the show really helped you get through a, a tough spot in your life. And so regardless of if, if you've been clinically diagnosed with depression or anxiety, or you're just somebody who's just looking to get your life back on the right track, therapy can really give you the tools to approach your life in a different way. And that's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more accessible and more affordable. And that's very important because in today's day and age, it's very difficult to find a therapy that you like in your area. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it's online. It's remote, and by filling out a simple questionnaire and a couple of questions, BetterHelp can match you with a professional therapist in as little as a few days. It's easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist. Try it out using the link below. That's betterhelp.com slash KnicksFanTV, and they will give you $10 off your first month. And because finding a therapist is a little bit like dating, sometimes it can be hard, and sometimes you pick one that you don't like, have no fear because because with BetterHelp, you can switch and find the therapist that works best for you without stressing about insurance or who's in your network or anything like that. And as I said before, it doesn't mean that you've got something wrong with you. It just means that you could be looking to get your life back on track. I've taken therapy before, and it's helped me in droves in terms of getting my life in order and, and getting back on the right track. So I highly recommend it. So if you're struggling, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. Click the link in the video description or just go to betterhelp.com slash KnicksFanTV for $10 off your first month. What's good, Knicks Nation? Salute. Tonight, the New York Knicks went down to Queen City to face the Charlotte Hornets on the second leg of a back-to-back. -back. And if you thought the Knicks were going to be tired after outclassing the Washington Wizards, then you were surely mistaken. New York was clicking on all cylinders from the get-go. You had Brunson putting on an offensive clinic, Randall playing bully ball all night long, and Dante DiVincenzo making a, a case for himself on why he should be in the starting rotation. Sure, the Hornets would make, a, make it interesting in the second and third quarter, but New York would put them away in the fourth and cruise to victory. And it would be the first time in 16 years, 16 years, where they would have a back-to-back wire-to-wire victory. The Knicks would win 122 to 108, while extending their winning streak to three games, tying their longest winning streak on the season. But let's talk about all this and get into the details. Welcome to KFTV Post Game Live. I'm your host tonight, Alex Chateras, a.k.a. the Tratocaster. With me on the other side is Mr. JD Sports Talk, a.k.a. JD Breen. Absolutely, man. They're taking care of the easy teams that they're supposed to be taking care of. But JD, I got to start off the show with with a hot topic right now because it's been a topic before uh -oh. this before before all of this before the injury to Quentin Grimes, Dante Divincenzo second game starting he goes nuclear tonight absolutely nuclear. Let me pull up the stats for you right now to read off his stat line. He had 25 points, went nine for 12 of the field, 75 percent shooting tonight, seven to ten from downtown, got you three boards, three assists, and this to continue a good night he had. Prior, not it, not as explosive. Had, still had 14 points. Went five for nine against the Washington Wizards. Got you four rebounds and one assist. But Dante making a case, as I said, to be in the starting rotation over Quinton Grimes because this has been a topic, JD, so far early into the season. People are wondering should Dante be in the starting rotation because Grimes has been timid. He's been up and down with his shot, and Dante just making it look easy out there. You see him cutting left and right. Brunson's finding him. Randall's finding him on the perimeter in the knockdown threes. He's knocking threes now to, at a high clip. He seems to have found his rhythm. You know, he goes four for eight last night, seven to ten tonight. Insane. And this is the stuff that you want to see Quentin Grimes do. So now the question is, and don't forget, he's playing solid defense, man. How about where he's he gets the steal off a of Lamella ball from the behind the back pass? So Dante making a name. Do you think Dante DiVincenzo should be in the starting rotation now moving forward? Honestly, man, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, man, I don't know, Alex. I don't know. I don't know. There's different ways to look at this, um, good and bad. The bad on Quentin Grimes, I would say, the way this could reflect negatively on him is, you know, there's been a lot of talk about 
you know, is it more Tibbs? Is it the system? Is it the the culture? Is it in terms of, you know, you have, you know, RJ and Randall and Brunson to start a lineup. So is that culture, is that, you know, is that what's allowing him or not allowing him to quote unquote unlock? to be more aggressive, to be more assertive, to get shot attempts. Like everybody's been debating about, you know, what truly is the underlying factor to this? Do we need to push him to take more shots? Does Tibbs need to call plays for him? Like, what is it? And then you see Dante DiVincenzo start and it's like, he's been here for the past few years. It's like, he's been the starting shooting guard for this team for the past few seasons. Um, I don't think that from one day to the next, the offensive system changed. I don't think that the play calling has changed. I just think Dante DiVincenzo has fit right in and he has just been playing freely and aggressive. So is it more the system? Is it more does Grimes needs to make sort of a, a, a mental adjustment and be more assertive? You know what I mean? Like, it, 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 like I don't see Dante DiVincenzo's aggressiveness, aggressiveness necessarily affecting Brunson's numbers. You don't mm -hmm. see it affecting Randall's numbers. And quite right. frankly, you know, RJ didn't have a great uh, game, you know, first game back. But if he would have been hitting his shots, it would have necessarily affected his numbers. So right. in, in conclusion, all this means is that you have a guy coming in at the two spot who's being aggressive and it's still not disrupting the other players around him. That is a very, very interesting development to me. The reason I say I don't know is because is this enough to automatically yank Grimes out of the starter lineup? Or do you see this? And Grimes is sitting down watching this. Do you just say, you know what? Let's see what Grimes learns from watching this off the bench. It's been a great, it was a great game, JD. Tonight was a great game. You know what I mean? Because you see the Knicks just beat up on a lowly Hornets team. And then what you have is Jalen Brunson going out there and doing his thing. Looks like he's getting back into a groove, getting to his... We knew he can get to his spots. We knew some defenses were going to make it much more challenging, but he's getting to his spots. He got 32 points, three rebounds, eight assists tonight, went 12, a 21 from the field, knocked down four of eight three-pointers, hit all of his free throws. He shot, 40, he shot 41% last season from three. He's shooting 47% right now, J.D., from downtown. That man is on fire. Okay, he is knocking the three point down at such an efficient and high rate. And this is one of the things that they everyone asked about, like coming from Dallas. Could he take more shots? Could he hit them at a high official level? Yeah, he's, st he's still showing that he can do that. I mean, even against Atlanta, when he wasn't knocking down all the shots inside the inside the arc, right? He was still knocking down threes like it was nobody's business. But to your point, his three point shooting. Definitely still there. The thing that I like now, because that there's been more passing on this team, you have guys like Di Vincenzo and quickly elevating their games. Um, he's could play. He could play off ball now, like he did down in Dallas, and that's just even better for him, right? Because last year he had to be that guy who consistently controlled the rock and made sure the team was at a steady pace. Not saying he doesn't do that now. But he has that freedom now to be off ball, whether it be Randall, Quickly, Dante, whoever it may be, even Josh Hart bringing up the rock. He can go set up somewhere else, take a breather, and somebody else can go initiate the offense. And I think that's a great thing for him. One, just to preserve him for the remainder of the season. And two, it helps his game because, look, we see all the greats who who play in the NBA. You guys got like Steph, Dame, who, who have to be capable of playing off ball in order to show how dominant they can be. For Brunson, for him to have that capability to do it on the Knicks shows you how much better this team is getting at, at facilitating too. So I like that. Hey, Grimes, listen, I'm wishing you well. Get well soon. This is not supposed, this is not supposed to be a diss towards you, but there is no excuses, young, my young Padawan. You see Ooh. how he moves off the ball? You see how he has that two-man game looking real nice with Randall? I was like, oh, snap. Randall's actually diving to the rim? Okay, we like that. Brunson did his thing. RJ, welcome back. A little sloppy, but not, not, nothing to hold against you. We know you're good. And Monday is a movie because I want to see the narratives play out. I want to see how this film goes down. Julius, I don't care if he's your friend. Kill him. Mitch, I already know you're going to kill Rudy. 
And then it's it's Ant Man and RJ. A lot of dissing, a lot of back and forth for the last two years. But this is a nice fun test. We did what we had to do this weekend, took care of business. And listen, we could be talking about a whole different thing. Yeah, like so what? It was Charlotte and Washington. You saw Miami just went on a seven game winning streak and they lost to Chicago. And Chicago is in, in flames right now. So you take care of who you've got to take care of on a schedule and we move. That's what this campaign is about. We move. So hit that like button for my man, Alex. Hit that like button for JD. It'll hit that like button if you like what the Knicks is doing. Hit that like button if you think we go beat Minnesota. Run it up. Run it up. Run it up. I'm out. Peace and love. Alex, appreciate you, man. Woo. Great show, JD. Great show, everybody. Thank you all for tuning in. And we'll catch you again for either next week oh, Knicks. or for KFTV postgame after we face the Minnesota Timberwolves. All right, everyone. We out. We'll catch Red you later. Boo!